And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game uh, called Villainous. Now, this is a Disney Villainous, right? Now, we know a lot about the villains in Disney, and that's because Disney has done a great job at bringing out some classic villains who everyone loves to hate, and that's what you're doing in this game. You are one of six different villains trying to accomplish your goal. Uh, so you might be uh, Prince John here, you might be Ursa, Ursula, you might be the Queen of Hearts, uh, or you might be Jafar. So you're going to be one of these villains trying to just accomplish your dastardly plan while stopping everyone else. Disney fans are going to love this, I'm sure. Let's take a look. beginning of the game you're going to pick which villain you're going to play the queen of hearts captain hook prince john maleficent jafar or ursula so when you pick that character inside it's going to tell you what you need to do to win it will explain that it will explain some of your cards if you need those you're going to have a player board so here's the queen of hearts each part you're going to have a token that represents you, so this is the Queen of Hearts. You're going to have a villain deck, and you're going to have a fate deck. And there's the possibility on some of the player boards that some of the spots will be locked. Uh, so the, uh, the Queen of Hearts has all her spaces open. So once everyone has done that, we have a bowl full of power chips in the middle of the table. Some players are going to start with power based on the player order, and then the game begins. On a player's turn, they're going to take their piece and move it to a spot that, the, that they're not at currently. As long as it's not locked, they can go to that spot. When you go to a spot, you can take the actions at those spots in any order you want. So the actions are going to have various things. Some of them are going to give you power. This one, for example, gives you three power. This one here gives you two power. Some of them allow you to play a card. That's what this one does here. Now players are going to have a handful of cards and they'll be drawing cards as the game goes by. These cards themselves many times are going to cost power to play. So for example if I want to play take the shot I would need to pay four power. If I want to play by order of the queen here I would need to pay two power. So you simply pay that much power to the bank and then you can play the card. Now there's all sorts of cards that are in the game. Some of the cards are going to be ally cards. When you play an ally card, for example, this card here is a card guard heart. They are an ally of yours. You would play this one here on my side of the board. So I can put him here, I put him in the hedge maze, but they can go in various spots. So by playing these allies, I'm gonna be able to move them around. You also can move a hero or move a card. So, for example, here, this one will allow me to move one of my allies to another spot. Why am I moving allies around? Because there is this nasty action that you can do right here called Fate. Whenever you do Fate, you pick one of your opponents and you're going to draw the top two cards off the Fate deck. These cards are really annoying cards that are going to hurt them. Sometimes they're heroes. For example, here's Alice. If Alice is active, the Queen of Hearts cannot move allies or, or items. Now, Alice is going to be placed on a location. Now, what's really annoying about heroes being placed on locations is not only are they going to do something bad, in this case, I can't move my allies or items, but she also blocks two of the spots. And in fact, this game has, uh, the Queen of Hearts has a unique thing. Some of the cards will make people grow, which makes them block three icons, or you can even make them shrink, which makes them only block one icon. Uh, so to get rid of an ally, you can use this token here to attack them, but to attack an ally and get rid of them, Alice here has a strength of five. My ally here has a strength of three. That's not enough to take out Alice, but if I have another ally with me, so perhaps I have two card guards, now they're both six, six is at least equal to Alice, so I can discard these and get rid of Alice to my discard pile too. Of course, Alice isn't the only thing that will show up. 
there's the white rabbit and the caterpillar, and there's all sorts of cards. Sometimes there's heroes, sometimes there's uh, effects, sometimes they can move it, but each person has a deck that's specifically designed to beat up on you that other players are going to play. Now, to get to win the game, you're just going to go around doing this, taking turns, uh, moving your figure to a new spot, and taking the four actions, maybe two actions if there's a hero there. You have to do a very specific thing. So, for example, the Queen of Hearts needs to have a Wicket card at each location and successfully take a shot, which means she's going to need to play card guards here. She's going to need to activate their ability, which is one of the things here, uh, one of the actions here, which says pay one power, convert this to a wicket or back to a card guard. So she can turn it sideways and make it a wicket. Once she's a wicket in all four spots, she can play that card that says take the shot. And then she draws some cards from the deck. And if their power is less than all the different guards, the, the wickets there, then the, then the queen of hearts wins the game. That's a very different way than the other villains win. For example, Captain Hook's objective is simply to defeat Peter Pan. Now you might think, well, why would you go through his deck and put Peter Pan out? Because he has all sorts of cards that will let him go in and get Peter Pan out. Now Peter Pan is an eight, and so Captain Hook needs to defeat Peter Pan at the Jolly Roger. He gets Peter Pan there, he defeats him, then Captain Hook wins. Maleficent is trying to get a curse at each of her locations. Jafar is trying to get the magic lamp at the Sultan's palace and the genie under his control. Ursula is trying to start with the trident and the crown at her lair. Prince John is just trying to have 20 power. So each one has a very specific different thing and they all have very different decks. So for example, let's take a look at Ursula's deck. Here's her fate deck. So you can see there's Eric and some fish and the dog and a dingle hopper. And then on her side, her ally side, you can see she changes form and there's a whirlpool. So the, again, the cards are very specifically set up for each of the characters. I can't really say enough good things about this game. Everyone gets one of these, which tells you exactly what all the symbols mean. And on the other side, it tells you the objectives of each of the bad guys, so that you kind of know what they're trying to do. The figures for them are really cool. They're like an abstract representation of each of them. Have like a little bit of a clear. I like the goblet here for King John. Actually, I think I like the, uh, the Queen of Hearts the best, um, but... I don't know, I really like these pieces, they're really neat. The boards themselves, the boards fold so they can fit in the box, but it has kind of a, a phrase from them. Nice pictures and artwork on that. And I really like these guides. These guides are great. It tells you what to do. It explains the cards that you're looking for. It tells you some special things here. You, For people who've never played before, you give them this little guide. They can look through it, they know exactly what they're trying to do. And then just the artwork in the game, sure, it's stuff from the movies, but it has a bit of a, a shine to it. See how his bracelet there has a shine, and I just love these. The cards are good quality. Everything looks good. The symbols and symbology and everything. This happens to be Jafar's deck here. They just look really fantastic. Let's take a look at one more of the decks we have here. This is Prince John. And just, ah, this is spectacular components. The only component that's not the spectacular is probably the cauldron itself, just kind of like a cheap plastic, but it still looks good, and the power itself is nice. There's also a chip here if you're playing a five to six player game. If someone comes after you with fate, you take this and no one else can get you while you have this token. Just to keep players from ganging up on each other. Lock tokens to show areas that are locked at the beginning of the game. Oh man, production here, off the charts good. Okay, so Villainous, wow, like I said at the beginning, if you like Disney, you're going to love this, right? This is, I was, you know, I'm always nervous when I see a game based on Disney. There's a lot of garbage Disney board games out there, but this one not only brings the theme to life in a really fun way, but also is a lot of fun. Now, this game takes some mechanisms from things like Scythe or more complicated games that you, you might not have heard of, and it makes them really simple. Move to a new location, take the actions at that location. 
That's not hard, but it gives you some really good choices. There's three choices to go to usually, and you say, okay, if I go here, I can do this, this, and this. What order will I take them in? I need to take the power first, so then I can play that power to get play this card. I want to play this card uh, as an ally, and then move that ally over to this spot. I need to unlock this area over here, and you're just trying to figure out the best way to accomplish your goals. Uh, the There's definitely some take that to the game. Obviously, you're going to want to play the fate cards on the other players, and I I especially enjoy how in this game that the fate cards are designed for you. You're not going to have weird things like Peter Pan show up in Prince John's Kingdom or Jafar having to go up against Alice. That started stuff. Some people might like that anachronistic sort of thing. I mean, I guess I would find maybe some joy in it, but it keeps things very focused. Each story is its own story, except in this one, one of the villains just might win. I'm assuming the hero comes back and wins the next time. Now, if you are a parent and you might look at this and go, will this teach my kids to be bad? I, I don't think so. Um, it's more silly than anything else. Uh, there's no like death and destruction in here. You're just trying to uh, accomplish your dastardly goals. And I think it's more silly fun. I like the mix of villains. They mixed two of the best, Scar and Cruella de Vil. But they certainly let it be known that, that there's more villains on the way for expansions. And there was even a thing in a rule book where you could go vote on that online. Now, I said the production value is tremendous. It is Disney-fied, true and true, to the point where the people I played with who are Disney fans liked it more than I, they might like it without that theme, which is fine because that theme is kind of just flowing through this game. The uh, gameplay itself is easy. The, but very asymmetrical. What I mean is, in a sense, each villain is doing something very different. When I played the Queen of Hearts, I'm trying to figure out to get my allies out there and get them in the right spots. So while I've been playing Prince John, it's just all about amassing power. Some might be a little easier to play. I think Prince John is probably easier to play than, uh, let's see, Ursula, because she has to get the people to the right spots. She has to get King Neptune to show up and defeat him so that she can get that trident from him. And that's cool. It has this good storyline, and it can go up to six players. Six might be a few too many for me. I think it's probably best with four. But man, it's nice to see an excellent Disney game. Wasn't expecting this one at all, but I'm glad to have played it. Villainous. Dice Tower Judgment approved. <laughs>